Hey folks, just with some board here, continuing reviewing holiday movies and specials in December. What else? It's Christmas month. <laughs> I just finished reviewing the special review of All of the Other Reindeer. Yeah, based on the children's book by Vivian Walsh and Jay Otter Seibold. With Drew Barrymore, who's the executive producer, provided the voice of the anthropomorphic Jack Russell Terrier. Yeah, she makes contacts with humans and other animals around. You know, working as a reindeer to take over Blitzen's job as he was injured. You know, for Santa Claus and the rest of the reindeer to deliver all the gifts to all the children worldwide in order to avoid the cancellation of Christmas, which at this rate I had to fight against um, this deranged uh, postman sending out all these nasty letters that he created on this mail sack replacing the, the toy bag and all these other gifts bags around yeah the sack and and all but she saved the day <laughs> for sure even though um, she was very small because all the reindeers uh, and Santa all have a weight problem so when they try to to flow off uh, out of the Santa's workshop I mean they just knock the the gates um, just almost tipped over but it was almost gonna you know fall off <laughs> in that scene yeah she was trying to learn how to fly but later she she took those uh, two male envelopes and just flaps around like she has wings. So they had to move as fast as they can to speed up just the time to deliver all the gifts to all the kids around the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's a wonderful, miraculous, uh, and excellent uh, animated holiday special that you could watch on, on TV when it was on at the time. It would have been nice if they put it on streaming, but it would be also awesome to own on DVD and VHS for sure. To watch it for your whole family during the holiday season. Yeah. And Drew Barrymore just definitely has a cute voice that portrays it so well. And it kind of seemed like a nod to her later character in Beverly Hills Chihuahua, a yeah, Disney film, where she played a pampered uh, Chihuahua. So you'll recognize that voice, for sure. That's very cute. Yeah. And it has some snazzy dialogue and some wonderful musical notes and here and there. And you recognize the voice acting, for sure, yeah. And the animation is crisp clear, considering that, that it was 3D and 2D um, CGI in the mix. And the frame rate was... It was like high speed, well, past you know 60 frames per second for sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now speaking of Santa's reindeers for sure, I'm doing a movie review on a family drama. And it's a fantasy that came out on November 17, 1989. It's called Prancer. A story about a little girl who lives with her father along with her older brother. Yeah, they raise an apple farm uh, somewhere at, at a small town, even though they were struggling pretty hard. But she ends up um, rescuing a lost reindeer that's injured that claims to be one of Santa's reindeers. Yeah. I have this on DVD. Uh, it's around somewhere in, on the shelf. I was going to take it out, but I said I'll just leave it there for now. Just to keep it up. But I'm sure you already know what it looks like. Uh, it's If you saw the, the image of the DVD release, you'll definitely know exactly what it looks like. Yeah, it's in widescreen. It has the theatrical trailer included. Uh, it was released by MGM back in 2000, and the transfer is exactly what it was. Um, it's 
It's a great transfer. But there is a Blu-ray release uh, that they put out from Shelf Factory back in 2017. Or 2017, whatever you say it. And it's an upgrade, but it's the same older master that they put out. So, hey, it's, it's worth something. But there's no other special features included, but what can you do? Just the same as usual. So maybe someday I'll pick that up um, if I ever get a chance. Uh, may maybe I'll get it on Amazon for sure. Yeah. Would have been nice if they had it for a lot cheaper. But I remember getting this uh, on DVD uh, while I was buying Blu-rays. Because <laughs> I had my very first Blu-ray player at the time. So it wasn't released on Blu-ray yet. But at least they were selling them every holiday season. And sometimes they release Christmas movies a lot earlier in October. Just to get ready for it. <laughs> yeah. But I actually did saw the movie uh, during my childhood days. Um, um, I didn't see it in theaters. I'm not so sure if I ever had. Because I was only four years old. But I did remember seeing this on in elementary school. You know, they rented it. I watched the whole thing. It was great. It was a very deep, meaningful, uh, and definitely shows that miracles can happen for sure. To have a little girl taking good care of this reindeer that's uh, being lost in the woods somewhere and hoping that he'll recover to know that, yes, he might be indeed what Santa's been looking for. Yes, I love that. And yes, the movie came out, and it, it did earn for its seven million budget. Um, it only made eighteen point six million. Not a solid hit as it, as we expected, but it did what it could because it came out just right on the weekend of Back to the Future Part Two and The Little Mermaid. So I remember that. Uh, when it came out. So it, it did have a... Uh, so it did okay. But I think it did grew strongly on home video more than it did in theaters. For sure. Um, but it is indeed very touching and heartwarming. Um, it is very rough. It, it is dark. It sometimes could be depressing and sad. But deep down inside... It's a great film and a holiday classic, for sure. And it's pretty underrated, too. I mean, it's a lot different from all the other uh, Christmas movies that we got. It stars Rebecca Harrell, along with Sam Elliott. Yeah, and I know because Sam Elliott has done some excellent work. He's done a lot of westerns, but he's also had done movies like Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Uh, he was in the, the Quick and the Dead, uh, the HBO movie, not to be confused with the Sharon Stone film. And he was in Tombstone, and he's done um, plenty of work. And he has this incredible voice, for sure, so you'll recognize it. A uh, Cloris Leachman, a fabulous uh, comedian, hilarious. Very talented. Uh, she has played a lot of characters, uh, especially in the the Mel Brooks movies. And she was on the TV show The Facts of Life. She even had the TV series uh, Raising Hope. She was also in the movie Bad Santa, another Christmas film. Yeah, and, and sometimes she does portray you know older woman in any role that she's done, even with that. That voice that she does. No longer with us, Sally. Yeah, but she was great. Uh, Abe Bogota, another legend. Yeah, best known for playing Fish in the TV show Barney Miller. Yes, he was in The Godfather along with Good Burger and North. All come to mind. Oh, yes, and Luke was talking. <laughs> Don't forget that. Yeah. Yeah, great guy. Uh, Michael Constantine, another great actor, and he was in a lot of movies too. Uh, he, in fact, he was in the the My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Come to mind, 
yeah and the Fender yeah among many others no longer with us too uh, Wutana Olda uh, I believe we, we remember her from uh, the movie uh, The Deer Hunter uh, Rocky 2 yeah she was in the Amityville 2 The Procession Girls Night Out and I think she was also in the movie Uncle Buck uh, yeah Uncle Buck I remember that because that came out the same year too Ariana Richards uh, before she went on to do the movie Tremors as well as Jurassic Park and yeah, I believe she was in the movie uh, Space Invaders too, so we don't want to forget that. <laughs> uh, John Joseph Aduda, Johnny Galecki, yes, from uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation that came out the same year. Interesting enough, went on to do the TV series The Bit Band Fury. Uh, Mark uh, Walston, Walter Charles. Michael Luciano, Jesse Bradford, yes, one of his earlier roles before he landed in the film King of the Hill, not to be confused with the Mike Judge TV series that was on Fox, the long-running one. <laughs> no, this was a movie with uh, Steven Sonnenberg directing it. And I know he went on to do uh, Bring It On and uh, Clock Stoppers, uh, among many others. Uh, Sandra Olsen, Dan Everton, and Boo. <laughs> yes, the reindeer. Boom. It's um, written by Greg Taylor and it's directed by John Hancock, who actually did the horror movie Let's Scare Jessica to Death. And he did uh, Bang the Drum Slowly with Robert De Niro and Michael Moriarty. Yeah, he's a stage and film director, also producer and wrote everything. On the mind. So this is interesting that he got to do a fantasy drama for the Hollies. The movie began set on a farm town called Free Oaks, which has the main street, other streets, and other towns around. Even has a local farms, especially at the woods uh, during the winter solitus. Well, we have a widower fodder who um, has a grieving loss and became cantankerous, named John Riggs, who's played by Sam Elliott, who runs an, an apple farm that's struggling through hard times since he lost his wife and their mother, because he raised only two children. One is an eight-year-old red-headed girl named Jessica, played by Rebecca Harrell, and her older brother, Steve, played by John Joseph Duda. While John is temporarily being helped by his sister-in-law, Sarah, played by Utana Olda, to take care of things, you know, some money problems and, and hard labor, and I know he tries to sell the tractor of John Deere, in order to be able to raise more money to pay the mortgage and all that but to make matters worse his plan was he was going to send Jessica to live with Sarah for the rest of her life because he doesn't know how to raise a daughter very well and Steve is probably the only one who could for a son so that way you know they'll be able to to do better but Jessica doesn't want that meanwhile while walking home after a school Christmas pageant yeah at school they were practicing singing all the Christmas songs Jessica sings off-key verse and yes they were dressed up and you know, wearing the angel and holding the candle as they appear uh, Jessica and her best friend, Carol, played by Arietta Richards, I witnessed a plastic reindeer that fell from the Christmas decorations um, down the sky, and it broke into in half, in pieces, and they're hoping they'll try to repair it, but no such luck. And it was told that it might have been Prancer, 
Yeah, one of Santa's reindeers, as she concluded, that's given from the poem of A Visit from St. Nicholas, also known as The Night Before Christmas. So, anyway, um, later she and Carol had go sledding down the slope, which then ends up going straight into the flower bed, just knocking down some of them. That's at a house that's being run by a reclusive widower named Mrs. McFarland, played by Cloris Leachman. Yeah, looking very wicked. Yeah, with the makeup job and all, but Leachman can do anything which she, whenever she portrays these roles. So, yeah, she got into trouble, but she eventually escapes straight through her sleigh into the gate, and then she ends up while walking home, she spotted a lost reindeer in the woods. She later spotted it again just when uh, John had found Jessica and he's been yelling and screaming at her because she's been getting into bigger trouble lately. You know, during the holiday season, his things are not going as, as planned as they hoped for. Since now I know something is going to go wrong. But um, they spotted the, the deer again. Only this time, during that night, as they were trying to drive by back home, with John ready to punish Jessica, um, the deer was badly injured. Yeah, because of the hunters. They just shot his leg and then he was going to ready to shoot him but Jessica refused not to let that happen because that is totally wrong they were going to shoot him for food so then later on once again spotted the same reindeer and claims that it's indeed Prancer that was lost from one of Santa, one of Santa's reindeers so at this rate, she decided to take good care of him by taking him directly to the farmhouse at first. And that's where it has all the other farm animals like the cows, the, the horse, the, the chickens and all. And then later, she ended up moving the deer straight into the shed just to be safe. So that way she doesn't get into trouble from John and her father and also because of Steve because he begins to find out later on but she makes a promise that he'll wash all the dishes yeah she'll wash them all every month as long as you know you don't tell John because otherwise he'll shoot him so throughout uh, Chris's vacation because it was the last day of school. Uh, Jessica was upset because they were trying to. She, she was trying to figure it out. Uh, why did this reindeer came? You know, and they're thinking that Santa doesn't exist, just as God doesn't exist, which that means no heaven and no North Pole. So that's where Jessica was ready to you know, break up with her friend, but they made it up for it. And at that rate, um, she had, all this time, she was trying to raise more money. I mean, for a while, she started feeding uh, Christmas cookies and then later hay and hoping that she'll be able to raise money by actually taking care of Mrs. McFarland after the accident uh, she caused by cleaning up the entire attic and her room which is going to be a five dollar job but in reality it turned out to be more than five dollars so I made it up for it and I remember because she actually decorated the, the Christmas lights uh, at first in the attic and then later she ends up on top of the roof yeah very dangerous so I'm glad she didn't fell to add the Christmas star and it was a good day's work but this was the kind of money that she'll raise to get more food to feed 
um, Prancer in order to recover. Next thing you know, she took a photograph and was ready to write a letter to send to Santa Claus, but at this rate went to a local mall to meet the in-store Santa, um, who of course is Mr. Stewart, played by Michael Constantine. Turns out that the letter in the photograph was being sent by the editor-in-chief to ready to write this art, this editorial down for the next uh, Sunday article of the Free Oaks uh, newspaper. Also, he was going to get uh, she was going to get Doctor Orel Benton, played by Abe Pagoda, to help the reindeer out too, but refuses because she ends up work. He ends up working with all of the other farm animals too, and he's very tired. Uh, yes, and Jessica was trying to hang on to the truck to get him his, his attention so he can change his mind. Yeah, I mean, they, they were pretty hard on, on her so much. But then Jessica is the toughest uh, plucky young girl we'll ever have. Yeah. Okay, and if that was the case, um, a bunch of kids came around, they, they spotted the prancer and Jessica assumes that it was Carol who who spilled the beans opened her big mouth but it turns out it wasn't Carol at all you know it turns out that yes it was from the article that was being sent uh, by the newspaper of the editor-in-chief sort of in the take of yes Virginia there is a Santa Claus and that's what happened when Sarah took uh, Jessica and Steve uh, to church on Sunday while John was staying at home reading the, the newspaper, including the sports section. And that's when something peculiar happened when Prancer uh, got out of the shed uh, from the farmhouse and then later all the other animals uh, had left by and and now things are becoming a ruckus because later he ends up reading the article with the photograph of Prancer. And that's where it was too late because while they were in church, yeah, Mrs. McFarland was there too. After all, I mean, Jessica refused to have milk and cookies after a job well done. So now she finally showed up along with the rest. And she was shocked and surprised uh, when the priest actually read the oratorical article. And that's where she was ready to, to escape. <laughs> um, even when they were singing the, some religious songs, um, yeah, actually mouth um, Carol that she had a big mouth because then when the kids uh, came by to spotted it uh, <laughs> Jessica actually took the, the hook and was ready to slash them tell them to go away for sure <sighs> okay then the shocking thing was <laughs> um, Prancer had let out once a causing a, a ruckus uh, in the house, you know, destroyed the TV, uh, ate um, one um, holiday pie, yeah, I think it was the, the cherry one, could be uh, the pecan one, and all this was a mess, and then suddenly uh, the this, this one um, all the townspeople began to converge on the farm, wanted to see him. John grabbed the rifle, almost threatened to shoot them. But then the local butcher stops him and was ready to pay amount of cash to take uh, Prancer in by actually you know, putting, her, putting him in a cage and have everyone publicly see them see him 
and take pictures and make sure they take good care of them uh, during this hazy snow winter almost getting ready for Christmas Eve at this point and then next thing you know uh, Jessica and Steve decided to go together to try to get um, Prancer out of the cage and then afterwards just when they're trying to make sure they don't get caught by the cops uh, Jessica hanged on on top of the roof trying to open the gates so that way Prancer will fly off just jump out of the, the, the cage and just jumped off for sure but then suddenly uh, Jessica fell from the tree branch just as uh, Steve was trying to hell on because after all Steve had her as a lookout to make sure once uh, Steve was trying to open the gates you know, with all the tools so now um, Jessica fell knock her head unconscious and was sent to the hospital and she was laying in bed for a while and then somehow John had a good heart when he went by to spot Prancer and found the book that she had which that turned out to be the book of you guessed it folks Yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. And just read um, half of the story, which it was a very sad scene, too, re of John reading the passage of it. And then next thing you know, he tells her many times to continue to be so hard for so long. Yeah, I mean, because he was very tough on her. But knowing for, for all this time that yeah, she is growing up, but she's turning nine years old soon. And that's no matter what she does or what she can do, she'll always be John's little girl. It's nice to know that she's very strong, very helpful. And it's just sad because now I realize that maybe this was a bad idea to have Jessica stay with Sarah so now they're going to start changing their minds and hopefully find a Christmas miracle for Prancer to finally recover from the injury and now he can fly off into Santa's sleigh yeah in this final twist and now they get to hear the silver bells for both of them because now they know they believe and there's this wonderful moment right there but I can see why some people were a little scared at first was when Santa's sleigh with the reindeers had appeared and and they had some some nice special effects that they use um, when Prancer disappears as he ran off, thought maybe he jumped out of the cliff. But it turns out that he went straight into um, the leash of all the rest of the reindeers. Getting ready to have a Christmas miracle. Uh, while, while there's a full moon. Uh, because there was also an eclipse too in that one scene. Uh, but then you begin to see um, that Santa is going to appear. So you basically see like a point of view shot of the entire uh, very uh, <laughs> vertical um, shot of the farmhouse, the entire town. And then it has this heavy glow of light that's flashing into a white light. I know that could scare people, especially kids. Uh, didn't scare me though, but it kind of almost blinded me <laughs> in a way. Um, but anyway, it's a very uh, deep, meaningful, touching, and heartwarming a holiday classic um, that you should definitely watch. 
uh, especially on Christmas. And I would say Rebecca Harrell is terrific as uh, Jessica. She's tough, plucky. She does everything she can you know, to save this uh, poor, injured um, reindeer named Prancer, hoping to fully recover for sure, even though they were struggling for hard times having to save the farm and all that and had to move on with their lives here and there um, I know I know John was very hard on Jessica so much and I mean the way he acted like he was acting pretty mean at first and all of that going around like he was becoming a bad man but he learned his lesson and he, and he felt sorry for all the cause that's been going around. It just life just wasn't the same without his wife, and he was afraid to lose um, someone he truly loves. And not just Steve, but but Jessica. You know, it's nice that he was lucky to have a daughter, a daughter who could be independent. Yeah, and really cares for some something that she loves, and and in fact, she's a hero, just like all of the other reindeer. <laughs> I mean, she helped save Christmas, while Jessica helped save uh, Prancer to have a Christmas miracle for Santa, and hoping that he'll be able to work together with the rest of the reindeers. That's very special. And also, Jessica's like Virginia. He believes that Santa exists, and rightly so. And it's a redhead, too, so now we know that there is a Santa Claus. Um, and in a great cast to join um, with Ava Goda as the, the animal doctor to take good care of things even though it was a lot of hard work and I know this this uh, one scene indeed as I mentioned where where Jessica actually told uh, Dr. Well that you know all doctors are liars you know they're not going to take care of things until he changes his mind you know definitely uh, rave at, at him and I, I know I mean she's a tough old she's a tough uh, young lady for sure but even though they were all hard on her and everything um, and Cloris Leachman you know playing the wicked uh, Mrs. McFarlane but she does what she can you know as an apology to what she caused but at least she earns the money that she can to buy food or even the animal shelter to take good care of a prancer and Michael Constantine as the in-store Santa becoming the who actually works uh, a local newspaper routes to, to help out all the editors in chief around and then all the rest of the family, you know, and of course she has best friend, Ariana, played by Ariana Richards, Carol. Yeah. And it really does show that it has wonderful miracles. Uh, there is a direct-to-video sequel uh, called Prancer Returns, um, and I know that came out uh, later in 2001. Um, and... Um, it's a decent sequel. I mean, hey, they, they knew they waited that long, so they want to see what happens next. And they shot the movie in Indiana, in Illinois, to uh, Utica, at certain uh, locations, like at such as the Star Rocks State Park, and New Carlisle, and, and La Porte. 
So just to shoot some of these certain scenes of of the snow and you know and and the woods and and how you overheard the the sound and then you see the farms around and all these other places. It's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, um, pick this up on DVD or at this rate, Blu-ray to check it out. It's a, the perfect movie to watch for your whole family. And it really shows how you how they help the Christmas spirit come to life and hoping that this will help the entire Ricks family for sure. So who knows, maybe they'll be able to raise money more, they'll save the farm, and yes, they will get presents, they'll get a nice uh, Christmas party dinner with the rest of the neighbors and folks around, and the townspeople for sure. Um, Especially when they were taking good care of Jessica for, for such a great deed that she's done. And it does have a, a rousing score by Maurice Jarre. Uh, just creating a, a Jingle Bells uh, type theme that they got. Especially when you heard it in the opening credits. Yeah, this movie was released by Ryan Pictures uh, along with Nelson Entertainment. And for a Canadian production... Even its distributor, uh, Cineplex Odeon Films, uh, just to keep that in mind. <laughs> but I know this is produced by uh, Dino De Laurentiis' uh, wife named Raffaella. Because she actually had produced um, several pictures that Dino's done and recognized. And it does give it a very, uh, a lot of chills because of how dark and sad and pretty depressing for its tone. But it could be as cheerful as it could, and miraculous as it could be too. So anyway, that's Prancer and I give the film five stars. I'm Josephine Sabora. And I'll see you later.